instead of just throwing it out the window, such ease. No, the hadith is in Bukhari and Muslim. Rather, impugn your own understanding. Allah says in the Quran, this is a verse in the Quran, there is not a single creation except that it praises Allah. Says the tasbih, subhanallah. But you don't understand how they do that. وَلَكِنْ لَا تَفْقَهُونَ تَسْبِيحَهُمْ Allah says in the Quran that all of the animals and the sun and the moon and the stars and even the shade prostrates to Allah. Sajda. But you don't understand how their sajda is different than your sajda. Have you ever seen a horse do sajda? I haven't. Do we deny the verse in the Quran? No. Allah clearly tells us it's a different way. The way we do sajda, we fall down on our face, we fall down and prostrate. That's not the way animals do sajda. If we, if we don't even understand how animals do sajda, how are we going to understand how the sun and moon do sajda? Impugn your own understanding and say, yes, I believe what the Prophet have told me and I also understand that the sajda of the sun is a special, unique type of sajda, has nothing to do with how we do sajda. I believe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the permission, Allah allows the earth to rotate around the sun and whatnot. One day something will happen that will change that course of nature. Impugn your own understanding instead of being so easy to reject the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As I said, the evil implications for just beginning to, to, to reject hadith and sunnah just because it doesn't make sense to us, it really and truly first and foremost are rejecting your religion. Once you start with this hadith, for example, then you'll reject Qadr because Qadr is the most confusing. How can Allah know what's happening and control and we have, you know, with this and that, then Qadr was denied. And then you start doubting the prayer and the fast. What is left of Islam? We have to understand the basis of our religion is the Quran and Sunnah. To start doubting it, you're going to start, you know, taking one pillar, two pillars until there are no pillars remaining. It also implies that Allah has revealed to us in the Quran and the Prophet has said statements that contradict reason and logic and common sense. And so you're saying Allah has done something a'udhu billah imperfectly. Either the Quran is not, not, not right or the aql he has given me is not right. One of the two. That's not going to be, that's not true. Allah has made us intelligent, rational, logical human beings. But he's also told us your intelligence has a limit and don't go beyond that limit. You will be able to understand certain things. Don't go beyond those things. And make taslim, make Islam. What is the meaning of Islam, by the way? Submission. The very meaning of Islam is submission. Make Islam or submission to those matters which are beyond the role of the aql. So basically to conclude, what is the role of, of rationality and reason and logic and common sense in Islam? And by the way, I've talked about reason and logic in this talk. The reality is we can talk about the same thing about cultural values, the clash of, of, of civilizations and morals, um, 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 the concept of humanism. The same things apply because the clash is the same. The clash is the same. We can give more examples and more ayat that are specific, but the, the, the reality is the same. We are so sure that... This is a fundamental human value. We're not even willing to question. Maybe my understanding is wrong. And maybe the Quran and Sunnah has what is, what is the what right way to do it. The same applies to what we call rationality. To summarize the role of, of, of logic and, and reason in Islam. Allah has given us an intelligence. Which is one of the best blessings He has given us. A wisdom. But... It has its function and role. It has its limits. Just like all of our faculties, we cannot see in the dark. We cannot hear when there's no air around us. Or if there's loud, we can't hear it. Just like all of our other faculties, it has its role. It's not infinite. It has a purpose. It has a limited functionality. Not unlimited in its scope. The problem with the aql is that you can't see its, its limitedness. Unlike, for example, sight. You turn the lights off, we all know we can't see. If you're wearing something on your ears, we all know you can't hear. How do we know this about our aql? That's the whole problem that occurs. We don't know this, we have to just understand it. It's not as easy to prove. Aql is not infallible. Rather, we can forget. We make mistakes. How many of us, we were so sure at a certain point in time that this must be the right way to go forward. And we did it and we turned out, man, that was the biggest mistake I ever made. How many of us? You're so sure this is what I have to do. Your aql tells you. And you find out you made a total fool out of yourself. Your aql was wrong. 
We know this in our daily lives. Well then, if your aql is wrong in your daily lives and what major to choose, what university to go to, who to be friends with, how can it not be wrong when, it, when there appears to be a contradiction with the Qur'an and the Sunnah? The aql is an organ by which a person becomes legally responsible. If a person doesn't have aql, Allah says you're forgiven for whatever you do. A madman, a fool, Allah says you're forgiven. And the aql corroborates the Qur'an and Sunnah and never contradicts it. The aql, intelligence and rationality supports our religion and never contradicts it. What we need of aql is to know that Islam is true. To know that the Qur'an is the book of Allah. To know that this man Muhammad ibn Abdullah al-Qurashi al-Hashimi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the last messenger. Those who don't have those basic premises, well then use your aql. Don't be blind followers. Use your rationality, as I quote, quoted you those categories, to come to the conclusion that Allah is your Lord, Islam is your religion, and Muhammad Sallallahu is your way, is, is your prophet and messenger. Come to this conclusion rationally and logically. Once you have come to this conclusion, الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ Now you don't take every single ayah, every single hadith and say, let me see, do I understand this or not? Why do I have to pray five times a day? Why is the cat 2.5 and not 2.75 or 2.9 or 10.7? Why do I have to go for Hajj once in a lifetime, seven times counterclockwise around the Kaaba with the right shoulder exposed? Why? No. There is no why once you have come to the conclusion Allah has told me to do this. So you see, Islam, Muslims are not blind followers, nor are they totally using the aql. They're in the middle. Ummat and wasat in every single field, brothers and sisters. When Allah says we are the middle category, that's in every single field. You go to the Christian, you go to the Hindu, you go to the other religions. Don't think, don't think, just believe, blind faith. In Islam, a person who doesn't believe, you say, think, be rational, be logical. But think about what? Think about the, the validity of the religion of Islam. Of the message of the Prophet ﷺ. Once you come to this conclusion, it makes no sense now to think about every single itty bitty minutiae detail. Once you come to the conclusion, the Quran is the book of Allah and the Sunnah is the way of the Prophet ﷺ, now you submit, now you have Islam. Okay? So the reason of aql. Alhamdulillah. Okay, excellent. Now we get the minutes. Usually get only the minutes at the beginning. Now you're telling me the minutes. Okay. <laughs> so Allah has created us with an intellect and He's revealed the scripture. And each one is used to help one another. To complement one another. And not to abrogate or cancel one another. If you think there is a clash. If you think there is a contradiction. Make sure that your understanding of the Quran and Sunnah is valid. Once it is, then impugn your intellect and don't impugn the Quran and Sunnah. Make sure the understanding is valid because remember, for example, the hadith I quoted of prostrating, the people misunderstood it. How can the sun prostrate? How can it go somewhere else and, and do sajda? They didn't understand. Sajda varies from person to person, from thing to thing to object to object. And so their misunderstanding led them to say it's a scientific fact that the earth goes around the sun. This hadith has nothing to do with that. This hadith has nothing to do with that. It only says that the, the, the sun is asking permission from Allah to do what it's doing. How it does so, how it prostrates, our minds can never understand. And let me conclude by quoting a very famous statement of Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu ta'ala an. Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu ta'ala an said, If the religion had been based upon pure intellect and rationality, then it would have made more sense to wipe the bottom of the socks when you're doing masah. It would have made more sense to wipe the bottom of the socks rather than the top. Right? You know, you know what I'm talking about? When you're doing the masah over the socks, right? What do you do? You take your shoe out and you wipe the top of the sock on both sides. Ali ibn Abi Talib said, if our religion was based purely upon rationality, it would have made more sense to wipe the bottom rather than the top. But I saw the Prophet ﷺ wipe over the top of the socks. Meaning that once you understand Islam is a religion, you submit to the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that really and truly is the essence of Islam. Let us use our aql to come closer to the message of Islam and let us not use the aql to take the place of the message of Islam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really and truly grant us the iman, the istislam, the Islam to understand this very fundamental point. Wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala abdi wa suri muhammadin wa alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Oh,